Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Digital Experience Team. This is our retrospective uh, for the iteration ending May 19th. Uh, first up, we'll go with things that went well, and I think Megan has the first one. Yeah, um, thank you, Laura, for adding the the new like template checklist to our MRs. Um, it saved my butt already, like just the, did you test in Safari and Chrome? Like there's something where I went to test it then in Safari because I had forgot and it didn't work in Safari. So wow, that saved my skin. Um, I hope it's helpful for everyone else, but uh, I was really stoked for that. Looks like there's not anything else on this list. So things to improve on is Laura. Uh, yeah. Um, so now that we're kind of breaking off into separate teams that each own separate um, kind of sections or knowledge areas on the marketing site, um, I don't know what happens when requests come in that don't fall into each of those three buckets. So there have been, you know, questions about the releases page. I do a lot of work with the events page, um, just because I guess I'm, I'm the name that they recognize um, and um, not even page specific, but Megan and I met about uh, accessibility issues, uh, I think it was last week. Um, where you know people are starting to reach out from other teams, reach out specifically to Megan, and we don't want 100% of accessibility issues to fall on Megan. You know, so how how do we kind of bridge that that gap of like things that fall outside of those those three areas that we manage as teams? You know, uh, I think Philza has a is, is typing. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a fair question. It's a process we're going to have to iterate on. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, people should not be coming to you directly with issues um, because that does disrupt the iteration. And um, there are like we have a quarterly plan. We know what our priorities are and fantastic that people have you know requests and uh, opinions about what things need to get done. But those items should go to our backlog. Um, they need to be triaged by Justin, Lauren and Nathan and I. Um, and then we'll like assign them to a group depending on what we think fits. Um, but if your group like you're like, hey, I can support another group. Great. Fantastic. Post it in the Dex um, Slack channel and we can kind of like help move things around. But essentially um, any issues that are coming in should be in the backlog and triage before they are ready to be worked on. Anything to add there, Lauren or Justin? I would, yeah, the other thing I have to is like communicate it out. If people are submitting issues and they're automatically tagging people who have worked on stuff in the past, let them know. You can remove yourself, and if it might be, you know, assigned to you down the road if, if you're part of that group. Um, but it'd be better just to remove yourself, and then, um, like Elsa said, we will uh, kind of triage it and move it forward. Or if there's an urgent one, like let us know and we can help get it in there. But then we also just want to be respectful of people's workload. So we want to be able to balance it out to remove another item that might be lower priority. Um, for me, I was tasked with removing cookies this sprint and one of them was happening on status.gitlab. And so I had to find the person who was managing that subdomain and my thought was, okay, let me look at the handbook to see what team it was. And then I went to the org chart to see like who's on that team. And then I just picked a random person. And I feel like that's probably not the best method to find that person. So I would love to hear like what you guys do to find someone cross-functional um, who manages like different subdomains. It's, it's not documented too well. I'm not even sure of like all the subdomains we, we own. Honestly, um, but that question Slack channel um, is really helpful. I'll use it and um, I'll usually get responded and, and helped out right away. Okay. Hobby's next. Um, I'm just, I was thinking about this as I was working through some, some components, especially ones that are like more complicated and have a lot of stuff going on. And this is like more of an engineering focused thing, but I'd like to lean into using TypeScript more as our site grows in size. Uh, helps to catch silly errors, especially as lots of things are flying around, leads to better code are complete. Uh, I added an extra sub point in there about being cautious about not using it in places where it doesn't make sense or where it slows us down. Uh, I've also seen uh, projects where people overtype and like the typing gets in the way of actually getting like simple changes out the door. Uh, so I just want to be cautious of that. But I just wanted to find like what are good patterns for how to do that, 
uh, and I'd be happy to chat with folks on the engineering team about that. I also added another sub point that I don't need to vocalize that people can com write comments on. But yeah, that's 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 it. Cool. Any comments, closing questions, concerns? Uh, we've got some action items there. I feel like we sped through this so quickly. Proud of us. Okay, thank you everyone, and we will see you next time. <laughs>